Members who are leaving the chamber would please do so, and others resume their seats. Okay, the next item of business is a motion to approve a statutory rule. I will ask the clerk to read the motion. That the direct payments to farmers crop diversification derogation regulations Northern Ireland 2020 be approved. Thank you. I call the Minister of Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs to move the motion. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Moved. Thank you. The Business Committee has agreed there should be no time limit on this debate and I call the Minister to open the debate on the motion. Mr Edwin Poots. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker and members. Good to see you all. Um, contrary to any rumours, uh, Mr Stalford and I have not went to um, the same hairdresser. Um, <laughs> It's, it's the old do-it-yourself job, and I see uh, Mr Dunn is now practising doing a bit of cleaning, cleaning up work, so MLAs do have other uses and uh, can, can do other jobs. Uh, that's good to see. But anyway, a direct payment to farmers, crop diversification derogation regulations, Northern Ireland 2020, implement the derogation from the crop diversification requirements for the 2020 uh, scheme year, which I announced on the 26th of March uh, 2020. This is possible under Article 69 of the Regulation 1307-2013, which provides for power to derogate from requirements in an emergency. The resulting regulations are subject to confirmatory procedure as provided for in the upper bill the amendments made to the EU law. The regulations were made on 30 April 2020 and come into operation on 1 May 2020. The confirmatory procedure allows the regulations to come into operation quickly. This is important given the applications for the 2020 direct payments have to be made by the 15th of May and farmers need certainty over their requirements. In, beef, in brief, crop diversification requires farmers with between 10 and 30 hectares of arable land to grow two crops and those above 30 hectares of arable land to grow three crops. There are some exceptions and specific requirements that crops must uh, cover certain percentages of the arable land. In 2019, 316 farmers had a two-crop requirement and 333 farmers had a three-crop requirement. I should point out that the derogation applies automatically to all farmers and individuals will not have to make a specific case. It is important to note that both winter and spring plantings have been impacted uh, by the high rainfall, although you wouldn't know it now, uh, but if you go back to February, um, that certainly was the case. And as the House will be aware, Northern Ireland had a particularly wet winter, with rainfall over the December to February period being 399.8 millimetres, 127 per cent of the 1981-2020 average. Uh, indeed, uh, February of this year saw the highest rainfall for that month since records began, 222.7 mils, uh, mill millimetres. Um, 267 uh, per cent of the 1981-2020 average. So this left farmers facing waterlogged and impassable fields in March when planting decisions were being made. I therefore came to the view that farmers were not able to comply with the crop diversification requirements in 2020, or could only do so with great difficulty and announced the derogation, which these regulations seek to implement. England, Wales and Scotland are implementing sim similar derogations for the same reason. In relation to ROI, the EU has not put in place a derogation from the crop diversification requirements for 2020, uh, but DAFM have announced that they will consider force majeure where farmers are unable to comply <coughs> with the crop diversification requirements due to the weather. I appreciate that since the derogation was announced, there has been a prolonged period of dry weather, but this does not alter the situation that farmers faced in March when planting decisions were being made. The decision applies to 2020 only. It is not a long-term policy announcement. And to sum up, it is my view that the regulations should be approved in order to provide for an automatic derogation from the crop diversification requirements for the 2020 scheme year. I commend the motion to the House. Thank you very much. I call the Chair of the Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs Committee, Mr Declan McAleer. Uh, thank you, Sean Cordia, and um, thank the uh, Minister for uh, reading out the motion. Um, as the Chairperson of the uh, ERA Committee, I take this opportunity to represent the views of the committee here today. The crop diversification rules were introduced in 2015 as part of the greening requirements under the uh, EU Common Agriculture Policy, which meant that farmers who adopted or maintained farming practices that helped to meet environment and climate goals were awarded with a green direct payment. 
The rules place an obligation on the farmer to plant two or three different types of crops, depending on the size of the land. Since then, arable farmers have continued to abide by the rules, with 316 arable farmers planting two different crops and 333 planting three different crops in 2019. Over a recent spell of adverse weather in the winter months, it made it difficult for farmers to comply with the crop diversification requirements. And February saw sustained periods of uh, rainfall, with it being recorded as the wettest month of the year on record. Arable farmers uh, had expressed concern that they would not be able to plant the usual range of crops required under the regulations in order to meet the obligations of the greening payment. This led to industry representatives requesting that the Department give consideration to this unique set of circumstances and ar that arable farmers find themselves in and asked if a derogation from the crop uh, diversification requirements could be made. The Department brought forward an SL1 for consideration by the ERA Committee on the 6th of May, and was broadly content with the merits of the SR, the Committee questioned whether the derogation would be applied automatically or if the farmers had to apply themselves. We heard they would apply automatically. The Committee also inquired about whether a similar derogation had been introduced in the south of Ireland. Uh, the Department advised that arable farmers were being asked to submit an application for force majeure. Finally, given the crop diversification regulations are part of the overall greening requirements, the Committee were keen to know if there would be any adverse impact on the environment, environment due to the derogation being applied. And the Department advised there would be no detrimental impact to the environment due to the short uh, duration of the derogation. The Committee com considered the ISR this meeting on the 14th of May and agreed to that it be confirmed by the Assembly. Um, I just want to make a couple of comments in relation to uh, that. That's in my role as a committee chairperson, but in relation to my spokesperson's role within uh, Sinn Féin. I just want to make the point that DERA uh, has um, proven itself as a department that can be flexible in responding to the needs of our rural community. And this is true of the crop diversification regulation before us today, which, based on last year's figures, will have a beneficial impact for upwards of six, six to 700 uh, farmers out of the 23,000 farm businesses we have here in the north. There are examples of good work, such as the partnership work that the department has been engaged in with the Department of Communities and DFA in helping to meet the challenges of the COVID crisis. So in supporting the motion today, um, on behalf of the party, we do want to also say that there are other instances I fear that the department has not shown the same flexibility in responding to local needs. Um, and I'll give a number of examples. For example, the, the, the department was strident in their decision to axe the ANC payment for farm to farmers in the LFA areas, but so far has failed uh, to implement the motion passed in this House in March calling for the restoration of the AN scheme. The department was also swift to halt the transition towards a flat rate of single farm payment entitlements, again disadvantaging the ANC areas, but so far has not provided support to farmers, for example, in the Sperrins, whose farms, buildings, Far and livelihoods were destroyed by a huge landslide in August 2017. And similarly, the Department did not take on board the era, the era Committee's wish for a sunset clause in the Agriculture Bill and demonstrated no flexibility to the 15th of May deadline for the return of single, farm, single application forms. And failing to do so, I had not taken into account the pressure this has caused for elderly farmers and farm agents in areas with no broadband and in the middle of a pand uh, COVID pandemic. So in conclusion, on behalf of my party, we're happy to support this derogation before us today, as it is a sensible response to a unique set of circumstances that farmers found themselves in earlier this year. But I will stress that the department must work harder to extend the same level of responsiveness across all sectors. Thank you. I allowed the Chairman leeway to wander from the content of the provisions in front of the Assembly because he is the Chairman. Uh, chairman of the Board. Other members will not receive uh, the same leniency. Uh, I call Mr William Arman. Thank you Mr Principal Deputy Speaker and I make my comments short in regard to that but uh, can I welcome the crop derogation. Uh, we had an extremely uh, difficult autumn and winter both for planting winter and spring crops, and farmers across Northern Ireland will very much welcome this derogation. It makes sense, and I commend the Minister and the Department in regard to this. I also commend the Minister for his continued hard work in relation to a number of issues on the agriculture front. He's worked tirelessly to try and bring forward a package to help uh, farmers. So I fully 
support and they congratulate the Ministry in its tireless efforts at this very difficult time. Thank you. Thank you. I call Mrs Dolores Kelly. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. On behalf of the SDLP, we welcome the derogation, uh, particularly in light of the very wet uh, winter that we did have and the difficulties that poses for the farming community. I think uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and crisis has taught us many things, but one is who are the important people and the important roles that farmers and those who provide and indeed prepare and serve our food, the, the role that they play. So it is important that we support them at this time. If, if the Minister allows... Uh, um, my, my father used to tell me about a neighbour because I'm from the Munchies area and a, in the, in the wintertime the farmer used to have to sign on the dole and they used to ask him, how many acres of land do you have? And he used to say, well, in the, in the summertime I've 21 acres but in the wintertime of three. And I'm sure the minister will be able to work that one out. So I'm sure there are many of the farmers faced uh, with, with that uh, uh, difficulty in trying to eke out a living uh, and many farmers are custodians of the countryside and I know that they uh, as we know that many farmers don't want to retire and work on and we all know about the difficulty in enticing young people in into farming so I very much welcome uh, this support I think it's the right thing to do at this time thank you I call Mrs Rosemary Barton thank you Mr Principal Deputy Speaker what a wet day there was a lot of rain last night. Statements we are all too familiar with here in Northern Ireland, a country where the weather has a great impact on our life and on our economy, including agriculture, perhaps the most weather-dependent sector of the economy. The land conditions determine when cattle can be released out to grass after winter housing. The seasonal warming in spring determine when one shears their sheep. And the condition of the soil determines the sowing of crops. This winter, especially in February, the weather was particularly adverse, presenting huge problems for the arable farmers working the soil due to the waterlogged conditions when the crops should have been planted. It therefore became impossible for the farmers to adhere to the greening requirements under the CAP and comply with the two crop diversification rule, thus resulting in them being non-compliant and needing a complete derogation from the crop diversification requirements for the 220 scheme. In supporting this motion this afternoon, it will give farmers certainty and will permit farmers to grow only one arable crop that has a later planting time and exempt from, this, from the crop diversification regulations introduced in 215. Mr Deputy Speaker, the Ulster Unionist Party support this motion. Thank you. I call Mr. John Blair. Deputy Speaker, um, in keeping with the position taken by the, the Dara Committee, referred to here already by, by the Committee Chair and others, uh, I rise on behalf of Alliance to support the, the regulations before us. I offer support, recognising that the derogation is limited in time and in scope, and therefore, hopefully, on any adverse effect on overall efforts and aims to assist in the green and farming through environmental schemes. These actions, it appears, are aimed at a few hundred farmers out of the many thousands in Northern Ireland. It is therefore fair to assume that costs are minimal, if any. Uh, it is important to be recognised and react to, to problems which faced arable farmers following a winter which brought record rainfall, and that such a situation will have also introduced additional difficulties and challenges separate to crop diversification issues. The regulations that are presented bring with them, of course, reminders of other factors apart from weather-related and seasonal matters, and the response is required at times to assist our agricultural sector. Processes that are currently in place, Principal Deputy Speaker, are enacted in the context of local alignment with EU regulations. In accordance with the Withdrawal Act, although these uh, arrangements are in place only until the end of 2020. We need to give serious consideration to how we deal with these matters going forward and post-2020. The clock is ticking in circumstances, not least of all in the context of the coronavirus pandemic, present additional difficulties in preparing for the future. Principal Deputy Speaker, in keeping with your instruction to uh, limit speeches to the remit of the regulations, I am going to miss any further um, reference to the Committee's desire for a publicly expressed desire for a sunset clause to be introduced to the Agriculture Bill. To sum up saying this, I see what is before us as a very relevant example of local issues requiring local solutions. So perhaps in his response today, the Minister can expand on his thoughts 
on how local and regional factors, not least of all the proportionate uh, importance of agriculture in Northern Ireland compared to other regions, can be factored in to catering for these specific needs in the future. Other than that, happy to support the bill. Mr. Paul Given. The to join with uh, colleagues around the chamber in paying tribute to the minister for uh, bringing this forward. Um, I'm a, a townie who lives in the countryside. Uh, I've got agricultural stock. My, far my grandfather had a large farm up in uh, Dungannon, um, but the family moved to uh, Lisburn. And uh, I was, uh, like you, Principal Deputy Speaker, uh, brought up in the, in the concrete jungles of our towns. Uh, but I very much value and appreciate what our farmers do now more than ever, as uh, a lot of the, the uh, towny folk have been out in the countryside. They appreciate even more so uh, what uh, service our farming community do to the whole of society, and there is a much greater appreciation now uh, for uh, farming uh, and the uh, importance that they have, particularly in the supply chain um, and, and what they do in getting the food on people's plates. So I know farmers in my constituency uh, raised this concern uh, with me uh, around uh, the weather and the implications, and then potentially any penalties to the single uh, farm payment uh, as a result. And so this derogation uh, is a, a very important step to provide support uh, to the farming community who need it at this time. Uh, I know Chairman of the, the Dairy Committee has indicated a number of areas where he has felt the Minister the Department uh, need, needed to do more. I think the Chairman of Dara should be very thankful, and I am sure other chairs of committees would love to have a Minister uh, like this Minister uh, to report to their committee, fighting for the fishing industry, got a package to support them, has championed our garden centres, got the result, championed the anglers, got the result. And so there is more, Minister, that I want you to be doing, and I want you to assure us in your response that what you have been doing and fighting for those areas within your responsibility, you will keep doing. And in respect of farmers and the further support that we need for our farming community, the £25 million package that was secured today, announced earlier, can he provide an update to the House as to how that is going to be administered to provide support to those farmers that have been impacted by this COVID-19? And I commend him for the work that he's been doing and encourage him to do more because the people are supporting him in what he's been doing. Thank you. The Givens moved from Dungannon to Lisburn. Maybe one day they'll make it all the way to Belfast. Um, I call the Minister for Agriculture, Environment and Rural Affairs, Mr Edwin Putz, to wind on the debate. Uh, thank you very much. And <clears throat> I'll, I'll just respond to, to the members, starting, first of all, um, with the Chairman of the, the Committee. Um, I am happy with the support that is given uh, as Chair of the Committee and uh, uh, in reference to the issues that he raised. First of all, in terms of ANC, uh, as I explained at the time, ANC would have to be taken uh, out of the budget uh, that exists and redistributed. So there was not additional money to spend, so I could only give money to the ANC farmers <coughs> by taking it off other farmers. Now, the remarkable thing is that whenever we get the figures in, it demonstrates that the lowland farmers are actually less profitable than the upland farmers. And that's what the figures say. And they're very hard to argue with. Consequently, we would be taking money off farmers who are earning less to give to farmers who are earning more. And I don't think that that's something that, that I, I, I could stand over uh, in any way, uh, shape or form. So in terms of that, um, we, we, we will uh, look at issues in terms of how we can better ensure that farmers will, uh, over the period, uh, be able to best manage their business to be profitable and also uh, to encourage uh, that to take place, because ultimately farmers don't mm -hmm. want handouts. Farmers want profitability. And that is our aim, it is to make our farms as efficient as possible to get the best possible prices, to market ourselves well, and ensure that the premium product that is produced here in Northern Ireland is marketed as a premium product. We should not be competing with commodities uh, from other, other countries which is not um, of the same quality. We should be marketing ourselves as a premium product and getting a premium price, um, which would help ensure uh, profitability. In terms of uh, other members, I thank them for the points that have been raised. 
Uh, I would uh, indicate to, to Mr. Given in terms of the £25 million, pounds, um, I would have liked a lot more than £25 million. Mm -hmm. I sought more. Uh, that's what we managed to achieve from the Department of Finance, um, and I welcome it. Um, it, is, it is good to have something to go back to our farming community with in this time of need. Mm -hmm. That will be targeted at those who are impacted the most as a result of the COVID-19 and the downturn in prices. And at this moment in time, that would appear to be mainly beef and dairy. Um, but that's um, for discussions with the committee and with the farming, farming bodies. Um, we will discuss that over the course of the next uh, couple of weeks. But I want to make a decision on it very quickly and start to get uh, the checks landing through people's doors um, in a short space of time, as opposed to engaging in a long debate as to who should get what. And I'll be honest. From the outset, there will be someone who misses out, because there always is. But we will try, uh, and as far as possible, um, to, to get as many people who have been impacted um, by it as possible. In, in terms of uh, the derogation, uh, Mr uh, McAleer also asked, would it have any um, detrimental impact on the environment? Uh, I would actually say the opposite, um, because winter crops tend to need more spray and more fertiliser than spring barley, and it has been because the winter crops have not been planted, and there is probably an abundance of spring barley going in this year. Um, spring barley tends to take less fertiliser uh, and less spray uh, to grow a decent crop of spring barley, and consequently it will probably have less environmental impact. I am um, not convinced by uh, this greening that, that was introduced by the European Union in the first place, um, and I think in particular when it comes to spring barley and perhaps spring wheat. Um, those are crops which can be grown um, with very modest amounts of, of inputs, and consequently, um, uh, it will probably be better for the environment this year um, in the way that it is done. And I trust that that will help uh, to reassure uh, members. The numbers of farmers are relatively small. I welcome the opportunity to bring this forward, um, and it will have a beneficial impact um, for those small number of farmers. And I thank the, the members for their support today. Thank you, Minister. The question is that the direct payments to farmers crop diversification derogation regulations Northern Ireland 2020 be approved. As many as are of that opinion say aye. aye. Contrary, if any? I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The next item on the order paper is a legislative consent motion for the Private International Law Implementation of Agreements Bill. And if members take their ease for just a few moments.